anybody could be up under something like that. Absolutely, because when you engage in those certain things, mm -hmm. it may start in the flesh, mm -hmm. but I guarantee you a spirit will come and back it. Mm -hmm. And then we get to shake and tremble inside of himself. Mm -hmm. And what will happen is Jezebel will show up, mm -hmm. and then that person will be oppressed. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, wow, I'm just mm -hmm. so church or wherever, mm -hmm. you know, workplace or whatever. And they'll flee from that place probably. Mm -hmm. So that person would be in denial that they're like practicing witchcraft or a witch. Oh, they were like, no, I'm doing what I feel is right to do. Or like, if I'm just say a pastor uh, that says, uh, all y'all got to stand here in this church or you'll be lost if you leave. Hmm. And then people get afraid because I'm say I'm preaching, I'm preaching the truth though, but what if I say that that right there, this is the only thing that you can be saved in the city of Cleveland and you better stay in the ship. Yeah, mm. that's, that's manipulation. Uh -huh. That's Jezebel. Yeah, that's what's great. it's like an intimidation to Absolutely. like making people scared to, mm. to do something. Absolutely. A Jezebel spirit. Absolutely. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she loves that. Yeah. She wants everybody to be Ahab. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Ahab so, is passive. Yeah. Just okay, I'll go uh -huh. with what you say. Okay, uh -huh. that, that's Ahab. They call him Jellyback. Mm. <laughs> Jelly mm. <Yeah>. uh, so, <laughs> so I think people want to know just how common is witchcraft. I think I may have asked that a little earlier, but how common is it in in, in the city of Cleveland? I say very common and increasingly, mm -hmm. even throughout the world, mm -hmm. um, because of people are looking for the supernatural. Uh -huh. If they can't find it in the church, there's unfaithful men uh -huh. who can't carry the power of God. Uh -huh. Then they're going to look for a, super, a spiritual experience. Uh -huh. So they're going to open doors to their cult, uh -huh. but they don't know that they're going to come out with a curse. Uh -huh. When you leave out that door, you're coming with curses. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's it's a hundred percent going to happen. So you're there are people um, around this building, outside in their homes, practicing with like practicing witchcraft, right? And Absolutely. and you also know it because the Holy Spirit is showing you. God is sharing with you. I think you spoke of um, things that you have seen in visions, like right in right. this building. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a problem with uh, somebody showing up um, here, showing up at Victorious down the street, mm -hmm. and trying to manipulate the services, trying to mess with us while we're ministering. Mm -hmm. So we had to challenge those people. Mm -hmm. If you're going to fight. You have to fight power against power. Uh -huh. Who has more power? Who's going to remain? Uh -huh. uh, as for us, we're undefeated. Uh -huh. So God is with us. Yeah, He's anointed us. So, yeah, very common though. It's, it's, it should be under common. underrated as to what's going on. Absolutely. So um, people, what about like voodoo and yeah, like people got dolls and, and stuff in their house. Absolutely, it's all real. Mm -hmm. uh, dolls, they'll set up altars where you, they'll, they'll set up your picture. If they really want to mess you up, they'll set up a place with your picture. They'll put certain things on it. They'll put, I don't want to get explicit or anything, but they'll put bodily fluids on it. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll do certain things to mess with you and your soul. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says enticing unstable souls. If you have things that have hurt you in the past, this is what Satan uses. Mm -hmm. Then he places a hole in your soul. You have soul wounds. Mm -hmm. And so through this these soul wounds, he'll begin to manipulate you with witchcraft. Mm. And so you wonder, if you, uh, why are my emotions swaying up and down? And you know, I need some pills for this. You don't need pills. Uh, you, don't need you need to be healed in your soul. You need prayers. Yeah. Because that's called trauma. Mm -hmm. And where there's trauma, I, I've said this before, 100% demons are hiding there. Mm -hmm. That's their hiding place. Yeah. In mm -hmm. your hurts. Wow. In the hurts, they're hiding in there. Yes. Because Satan doesn't play fair. <laughs> so, so, he and, you when so if my mother passed away, and I'm, I'm just still grieving from it. Could that be dangerous? Absolutely. If you have a broken heart, broken heart. Yes, that's when you need to draw near to God. So it's a, it's a, it's a like a crossroad. Mm -hmm. Where okay, you're broken because God says He's close to those who are broken. But imagine you're broken and you're going to drinking. Mm -hmm. Then a demon enters you mm -hmm. because your your soul is open. And exposed. That's why they call drinking spirits. spirits. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's why that that liquor it conjures something. 
You ever seen somebody they dream of it? He just turns into a different person. I don't know. Yes, he does. That's because he's possessed now. Amen. What about people who say Jesus drank wine? Mm. Oh, snaps. First of all, wine cool. when Jesus turned it, they said it was like less than 5%. Mm -hmm. And there's no, uh, there's no recording that, oh, Jesus was so drunk at that party. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. When you when you get drunk, in other words, it's saying there's a limit that where it's you and then it's another thing that overtakes you. Mm -hmm. Being drunk is when a spirit overtakes you mm -hmm. and you're gone. Yeah. And you wake up, what did I do last night? Oh, you were possessed. That's what yeah. yeah. They didn't want to do it again. Even exactly. though they don't remember. Exactly. Yeah. To numb the pain of whatever they're going through. Mm -hmm. It's because of pain. Mm -hmm. Most of addiction is, is suffering. People have suffered in life, so they look for the quickest solution. Mm -hmm. And because God's process is actually long, mm -hmm. and it's day by day, they look for a quick fix. Mm -hmm. We live in microwave society. Mm -hmm. So they go wow. to the closest thing. Mm -hmm. Microwave, yeah, that's true. So, will we be surprised at who is working witchcraft? Absolutely. Because if it's a lot of people doing it, we see people every day, but when I look around, I'm like, y'all, you know, I'll be at the store, uh, you don't look like you would and see somebody I know, but it could be somebody we know and we'd be surprised. It's very, it's so prevalent because now they get you, they start you off kind of like a, the gateway drug is marijuana. Mm -hmm. So they get you with astrology first, probably. Mm -hmm. And so once you're into astrology, me and my dad will into, okay, I'll look at some tarot cards. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll look at this and you think it's, mm -hmm. you know, you think it's um, very innocent. And you start playing with the Ouija board. Mm -hmm. Start going into heavier things. All of a sudden, you're you're in. Yeah. But you want to get out of it, so you stop it. You think you're fine, but you've already crossed into their territory, and they've mm -hmm. come to collect. Mm -hmm. Oh, they come so to they, collect. So they'll come and mess you up, and you wonder why people around you treat you a certain type of way. It's a dark cloud seemingly like following you. You wonder why you fill out job applications mm -hmm. and you come near success syndrome. You come to the very end, and then you miss the job again. Mm -hmm. Wow. You need to reverse the curses. So you what? So the curses. is there anything that? We could, we may have in our homes that we need to get rid of, like dragons or frogs or you know something that we picked up from a fair or a thrift store and we thought it was nice. Anything that alerts you, I would say. Anything that looks like, hey, this might have been an idol. Mm -hmm. This, this might have been dedicated, mm -hmm. or or you even know, like since I got this thing, mm -hmm. everything's been bad. Let me just throw it out mm -hmm. or burn it or something. Mm -hmm. Get rid of it. Get completely get rid of it. It should go. Yeah. Absolutely. But I would say mostly it's habits mm -hmm. because uh, we have phones mm -hmm. a lot. So whatever is pulling you, mm -hmm. um, like I say, I keep going back to this for some reason, astrology. So you're saying the phone could be an idol? Absolutely. It could be an idol, but it could be a, you, you look at horoscopes when you wake up, it just pops And, and this can be used for all of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And Somebody I, might need to get rid of I, That's a false prophet. That's because right be, Astrology. Because mm -hmm. it, the horoscope is seen right sometimes. Mm -hmm. But then there's certain things that just doesn't line up or add up. Mm -hmm. But what it's trying to do is condition you so that that spirit can come into your life. So then when it looks like that, you go back to it. Like, oh, wow. I guess they were right. I guess I just won't have mm -hmm. a fortune today. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. you invited that demon to come yeah. and mess you up. Right. God will bless you every day if you believe him. Mm -hmm. That's right. They say, oh, it's Miss Phil Fortune on Thursday. I guess I want to. That's a lie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Okay. Uh -huh. So, what harm, uh, going back to the prophetic for a minute, um, mm -hmm. what good or harm comes from the prophetic? And, and I ask that because, um, like for instance, if you're speaking into somebody's life, um, they may not approach because they they may fear that something is going to be exploited, and so how do you how do you deal with that surrounding somebody who may want something to be private? That they, they, they may want prayer or prophecy, but they may feel like they don't want it to be well, known. I'll say this: or harm will come to them. If you look at my prophecies online, they've been way deeper than in here for mm -hmm. a reason. Because mm -hmm. I've been sparing people's reputation. I'm not trying to expose people. So you can spare reputation. They, exactly. I'm not a monster. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nobody's mm -hmm. trying to just say, "Ah, oh, you did this and you done this, and we should just mm -hmm. destroy you because of it." No, that's not the point. Mm -hmm. 
The point is that we get to the root of the problem. If it's unnecessary, why would I say anything? So, um, I would say just come. Because God loves everyone. And that's the point, to deal with the problem. But if you won't come willingly or be transparent with it, then how can God meet your need? Nobody's going to explore. That's why I say, you want the microphone or not the microphone? So you guys want to speak in where it exactly. can be heard or exactly. not heard. Because okay. I want to, I want to. Can I explain my dimension a bit? Mm-hmm. I passed the dimension of in seership where it's like, oh no, that can't. No, I, if I've seen a vision, I'm telling you, it's mm-hmm. completely 100 percent accurate mm-hmm. because I know what God is saying. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I don't know exactly okay. what God is saying. Mm-hmm. So I say, I've seen this. Mm-hmm. Can we deal with it? But there's certain times where meaning or wherever I just say this and this and this has happened just like that. And Pastor, you were even like, how'd you get that information? I'm like, I just saw a vision real quick. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. So when I have no reason to spare, nobody else is there. I'll just say it plainly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is what's going on. Yeah. But some people may be like, I don't know if he sees me. I don't know if he knows. No, mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. And so, I'm not judging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get it. So somebody said, um, I would say Prophet Kennedy um, makes you want to live right. <laughs> That's a great quote. Can we put that on the show? <laughs> Makes you want to live right. Amen. You know. That's how and, 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 and it's not him just as the man, but it's when you know that your life is actually an open door to what God can see. And I think that people often um, do things, whether it's in private or out, when, when they're away from the church, and it just feels like God's not watching. And, but when you, when God has placed a man on the scene who will call it out, then that might make people think twice. Like earlier I was talking about or asking about um, prophets in the New Testament. You know, what's the purpose? Right. Um, you know, for the perfecting of, mm-hmm. of the saints, right? Amen. Perfect. And so if anything will make me think twice before I sin, then that's that's a good thing. That's a good thing. The only thing it will harm is your ego. It'll harm the ego, which needs to be harmed. Right? It'll harm your pride. Uh-huh. Oh, dang. I was getting away with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you don't want to repent, mm-hmm. then God says, hey, call that person out. Mm-hmm. I'm calling you out. And what's wrong with pride? Pride is a terrible thing because when it's blinding you, because it blinds you, shuts you, shuts your, uh, shuts your senses down. Mm-hmm. So while it's blinding you, you don't see the other demons that are coming. Mm-hmm. You don't see the other things that are coming to bind you because you think you're fine. Pride. I know, I, I got a handle on this. I'm okay, I'm okay. And while you're okay, but you're not okay, other demons are coming. Now anxiety's coming. Mm-hmm. Why, why, why am I worried? Why am yeah. I looking over my shoulder? Depression comes. Man, I'm just so sad. And then, now you're being bound mm-hmm. because pride was there. Mm-hmm. When you could have just said, I need some help here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the, the God said he hates a proud look. That's right. And that's I think that's the first thing on the set, the list of seven right things that the oh, Lord hates. Right. He that's says right. a, a proud look. Wow. That's right. So yeah. um so no harm can come from the prophetic other than what needs to be harmed. That's right. Like the ego and pride. Anything of Satan. Mm-hmm. But sometimes people cling to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then it's going to hurt. Mm-hmm. That's the reason for crushing. So if I don't want you to speak um, into my life, what, what what does that normally mean? That you don't want God? I don't want God, just period. No. Because if God is saying, like, that's how the kingdom works. Mm-hmm. You may not be the person that God speaks to directly, mm-hmm. but God has set up men, mm-hmm. just like Ephesians 4.11, mm-hmm. to speak it to your life. Mm-hmm. So if you rebel against the people that are over you in the mm-hmm. kingdom, then mm-hmm. you've actually just mm-hmm. directly rebelled against Jesus Christ. Yeah. So yeah. you don't really want him. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because okay. he's not coming to you to say, look, you know, mm-hmm. this is what I'm doing. No. Your spirit is not built up enough for that. Mm-hmm. But he set people. Look at look at Saul. What happened to Saul? Mm-hmm. Saul ascended dimensions too quickly. Yeah. That's why he went blind. Yeah. So all of a sudden, boom, the brightness of the Lord Jesus, he said, ah, yeah. Lord, who are you? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Blind. Then all of a sudden, he was blind. Mm-hmm. Because when you've seen him like that, mm-hmm. it shuts down your body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's a process. When Jesus began to visit me like that, there was a process. It wasn't all at once, all the brightness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
It was dimensions of glory. Okay. Revealed. Mm -hmm. When that doesn't happen, you see Saul. Mm -hmm. And then right. he was praying and he saw a vision of Ananias coming. Ananias, go touch him so that he, his sight can be restored. He was actually injured uh -huh. from uh, that experience. Um, wow. So, and I'll ask, how do um, prophets ministry deal with today's sin, strongholds like pornography uh, and things that have people under strongholds like that today? Today's prophetic. I think it goes back to what um, was spoken to Jeremiah mm -hmm. um, to tear down, mm -hmm. to break and destroy, and mm -hmm. also to plant. Mm -hmm. So, breaking a stronghold, you have to break what is already there and been established by Satan. Mm -hmm. A stronghold is a mindset of Satan where demons can dwell, yeah. especially in the mind. Mm -hmm. And so, to break that, just to break it is not enough. Mm -hmm. Because the house swept clean, an unclean spirit comes back. Mm -hmm. But you have to fill it then with God's system. Yeah. So when the prophet can see these certain patterns, demons, whatever it is, um, the uprooting and then the planting of God's word. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of part of the ministry, every prophet is a deliverance minister automatically. Okay. Right. If you say, oh, I don't believe in deliverance, you're not a prophet. Mm -hmm. Please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. You're hoping. Yeah. So how long has this been going on in, in your life? How did this, um, you, you got saved at what age? So I got saved when I was 15. <coughs> 15. Filled with the Holy Ghost at 22. Mm -hmm. But before all those things, I have been hearing God and seeing visions from God for 21 years now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So since the age of nine. Yeah, so it goes all the way back. That's how... Early on, God has been dealing with you. Yeah, that's right. And I, I, like I said, I started hearing demons at age five, though. Mm -hmm. And so that reality has just been different. So I'm, I was born a prophet. Mm -hmm. But it just took the process of time for me to be prepared for my assignment, mm -hmm. my calling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I heard from demons at the age of five, except I was probably doing what they told me to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's, true. that's the difference here <laughs> and I got saved way later on you know yeah but you said there was a spirit of pornography that's right and um, tell them about the, the workshop that is upcoming so we're going to be um, targeting pornography because the epidemic the stats are just crazy of people even in the church doing it, mm -hmm. thinking we might be the main target. Mm -hmm. uh, men of God are the target. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people of God are the target. Mm -hmm. And so we want to talk about the epidemic. You know, we have it at our disposal on on the phone nowadays. Mm -hmm. You don't have to look up a magazine or a book. Mm -hmm. It's very serious. And that's the number one thing that's going to bring a curse upon you. We talk about witchcraft. That's what Balaam taught everybody to to do. He told Balak, he said, look, if you want to put a stumbling block, have them sleep with the foreign women who worship foreign gods. Mm -hmm. So the foreign gods that were in their spirit interacted and intermingled with the people in Israel. Mm -hmm. And that's what brought the curse upon Israel in Moses' generation. Mm -hmm. So talk about being messed up. It's so in sexual morality, yeah. you're going to be messed up. Okay. So what is a spirit spouse? Is that something that comes from that, that world? Oh, we're getting to the meat and potatoes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yes, it comes from the spiritual realm. And it's a demon, an incubus, succubus, you want to call it a mermaid, whatever you want to call it. It has claimed you. It's literally said, I'm married to you. You're not getting married to anybody else. It's literally said, I'm going to mess up every situation that has to do with God even. So it will speak to you and say, oh, I know that you're married to this person, but why don't you go sleep with this other person? Go desire them, and it will change your desires until you do it. Mm -hmm. It will mess you up. You'll be arguing with your spouse, even physically fighting, mm -hmm. emotionally fighting, whatever, mm -hmm. unless you confront it and cast it out. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you can have, you can even have, I've seen so many things. If you have a dream where you're nursing a child, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're pregnant with a child. Mm -hmm. 
that might mean that you have a spirit spouse and that you have spiritual babies now. Mm -hmm. With you that spiritual baby. With that demon that comes to sleep with you at night. Mm -hmm. Sound like Nephilim or something. It's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. It's a hundred percent real because the symptoms even mean that, like in other words, people will say, Oh, I don't know if that's true. Okay, but why are people bound then? Mm -hmm. And why are people who know these things and believe them free? Mm -hmm. Because the truth makes you free. Mm -hmm. People say, oh, I don't believe the Bible is not. But look at your life. You're dirty and you're sinful. Yeah. Believe the truth and you become clean. Mm -hmm. So the evidence of the truth mm -hmm. is that the people who walk and believe and know the truth mm -hmm. and live by the truth are free. Yeah. And the people who reject the truth are still bound in their pride. Amen. Well, praise God, you all. Well, this is bringing our program to an end. Amen. We thank God once again uh, for Minister uh, or Prophet Chris Kennedy. Amen. Praise God. had selected, we were looking at dates for, and we're talking about a men's uh, workshop dealing with what he was just talking about. We were looking at July 15th. That's also, I believe, a sisterhood day. So if we can do something without interfering, I know grilling and chilling or what was going on that day, but we kind of felt like this kind of had precedence over that because of the importance. Mm -hmm. Even if we ourselves are not struggling uh, with this, it's somebody else that we can be equipped to help. So when we do the grilling and chilling, maybe we can begin to speak into people's lives uh, in a way that we may have not been able to do before. So um, that's something we'll, we'll discuss it later, but that's the day, because we don't have a lot of open dates okay. uh, to do things on Saturday. So. Um, it'll be a lot less work for you all. Uh, maybe more work for us. Yeah. Um, but uh, And so just before we close, what's going to happen in that workshop? Well, we're going to learn a lot of revelation. And, and people say that knowledge is the key, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I believe that. Mm -hmm. But I believe also revelatory knowledge. Yeah. Is the key to becoming free from that cage. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people feel like they are the only ones that have ever struggled with anything, right? That's mm -hmm. how Satan tries to keep it when it's hidden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do it alone. So come expecting deliverance and to be set free. Yeah. To be honest, because people are struggling and there's no reason to hide anything anymore. Jesus is coming. Yeah. Do you want us to judge it or do you want him to judge it? Uh, right. Yeah. Let's so, just be honest. Yeah. We have to be clean so, and perfected. So yes. and so in, in this workshop, it obviously won't be televised no. uh, because we might really get into some things mm -hmm. where pe people can feel free to, to speak out if they will. And if not, you know, the Lord will still be dealing with whatever the struggle might be. Absolutely. Then, but it's going to be a good place to be. See the way it just comes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's not, I don't think, are we restricting it? Is it just the men? Because well, that's you know, something that restricted. I was going to bring up. Um, right now, we're just talking men. Does that sound like something? Now, one of the things I know, um, she has a, a sisterhood agenda uh, right. on, on that same day. So that's something that, you know, we'll discuss. But that possibility. Might need part two then. Yeah, part yeah, two. part two or yeah. something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I do know that when you bring women together, um, and, and then you bring men together, um, it can be more transparent. That's right. Um, yeah, yeah, if I can be a little transparent, I mean, God already told me, and I told you ahead of time, mm -hmm. said, look, people are going to become more and more naked out in, us, in society. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Um, we need to be guarded against sexual morality. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just the pornography, it's also just lust in general. Lust. In a perverse generation where everything's mm -hmm. just fine, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's not. It's not okay. It's really not. Not okay. Amen. Yeah. All right. Well, praise the Lord. I want to thank you for joining us, Minister. Praise the Lord. Um, we're closing, but did we have any questions that before we close from anybody? Brother Vince, I think. We got two people. All right, Brother Vince. 
just a quick one. I overheard your uh, little battle about getting the Holy Ghost. Um, what encouragement would you give the ones on the altar when it comes to receiving their gift? Having you haven't uh, been persistent in your seven-year fight to gain that gift of God. I would say read and pray before you read. I would say, Lord, give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that I can have revelation from you. Lord, guide me. And as you're reading, grow in faith because hearing the word of God grows your faith. And so receiving comes from faith as well. And so once you spend enough time with Jesus, you'll be ready to receive when you can receive. Be diligent because consistency is what God is looking for. If you want to improve and go further in God, consistency is what gets the results. Consistency. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Did I see another hand before we close? Mick, praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise him. So I do have a question. I'm battling. I'm not going. Is it uh, televised right now? Because I want it to be televised, but I'm not going to say the name. Mm -hmm. We're all okay. Is uh, my friend? Me, and my friend had a big debate. So pornography. He's he uh, agreed. It's uh, terrible. He, you know, you know, it's terrible. He's a psychiatrist. He knows it's terrible and everything. But we had a debate about hentai. And for those who don't know who's hentai, it's very famous in the room. It's Japanese cartoon porn. So a lot of people believe hentai is okay because it's not real. But hentai, I'm trying to tell them, hentai is more evil than regular porn because they put stuff that only the mind could fulfill. So I just need a little help of, I'm trying to hit them with every scripture. But there's been pornography, but he tried to swing on to me and say, it's hentai. Well, any type of perversion, that's perversion. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's beyond, like you said, it's beyond even watching people. You're watching something else, yeah. which, I mean, both are corrupt, but it's, it's even more perverse. So when you open the door to perversion, your desires begin to be twisted. Mm -hmm. So you stop desiring the natural use, which is a man and a woman. And now you're desiring, well, I gotta watch these cartoon characters. No. That's perversion. And and when you open that door, <laughs> it's just like all doors. That uh, I wanna hit some points. Right now. Yeah, like, I get it. Um, once you open certain doors, you'll be fighting those spirits until you get deliverance. And you may not have to pray like to deliver yourself. Right. So many times people partner pornography with masturbation. When you masturbate, you're not, oh, it's just me. I'm just having sex with myself. Mm -hmm. But actually, let me tell you, a demon appears and you're having sex with a demon. Mm -hmm. And it enters you. Mm -hmm. Then you realize, well, I can't stop now. Well, it's just one time. That's how Satan gets you. Just one time. And then one time turns to ten. And then all of a sudden, you realize, wow, the presence of God is going through my life. If you ever had the presence of God. Mm -hmm. My spirit is dead. So you, you have to... You have to shut it all down and have guards because, you, like you said, you said the imagination. Yeah. So it started in the mind. Oh, yeah. Enticing unstable souls. Your mind is a portion of the soul. Your, your mind, will, and emotions is your soul. So your thoughts have to be pure. You have to be in your thoughts like, no, that's wrong. So then that guards you from even doing the deed. But if you don't stop your thoughts, you just, oh, I just, I just fantasize whatever. You've already done it. Jesus said, don't look at that woman with lust in the heart. Why? Because when you look at her and then you lust in your heart or soul, then you've opened the door.